All right, so on 5-1, we're talking about bisectors of triangles. So, again, the concept of today isn't new. So, perpendicular bisector is what we're going to start with. By now, you guys should be able to look at this picture and be like, oh, this is a perpendicular bisector of line segment AB. Do you guys see what I'm saying? I'll still walk you through it, but you should be able to recognize a perpendicular bisector by now, okay? So, a perpendicular bisector, any line segment or ray that passes through the midpoint of a segment and is perpendicular to that segment. So, this is a line, obviously. We could have just made it a line segment or we could have made it a ray. It doesn't matter. But this is our perpendicular bisector because it goes through the midpoint of line segment AB and it cuts it into two congruent pieces because bisector means two. Bi is two, right? So this is new. Perpendicular bisector theorem, if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, for example, this point here, okay? See how it's on the perpendicular bisector, okay? Then it's equidistant, that means equally spaced, um, from the endpoints of the segment. So this point here is the same distance away from this side of the end um, of the line segment, and it's the same length as this one. Do you get what I'm saying? So this let us know it was a perpendicular bisector, which meant that these two lengths were the same. Is that okay? That's a new rule, all right? So on this one, converse, that means backwards, right? So the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem, this time it says, if a point is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, so we would know this information, we would not have this probably given in our picture. It's kind of too easy if they did that. So if they told me that these two lengths were the same, then that means it's on the perpendicular bisector of the segment. Then it means this is true. Do you see what I'm saying? One of them's forward and one of them's backward. Is anybody confused? Okay. So now we have, maybe, uh, concurrent lines. Concurrent lines, this is probably new for you, that's three or more lines that intersect at a common point called the point of concurrency. So when you have three or more lines that meet, that's called concurrent lines, and where they meet is called the point of concurrency. Okay, so what we're going to have here is we just talked about perpendicular bisectors. When you draw three perpendicular bisectors, where they meet is called the circumcenter. Okay, so down here in our triangle, I have circumcenter theorem. The circumcenter of a triangle is equidistant from the vertices. This is a whole bunch of information that all deals with perpendicular bisectors. So if you look at my triangle, okay, all these red lines are perpendicular bisectors of the triangle. Do you guys see that, right? So these are my perpendicular bisectors, so that means this must be the circumcenter, which is where they meet. Because I have a circumcenter, I know that it is equidistant from the vertices. So that means that AP is the same as AB, or excuse me, PB is the same as PC, the vertices of the triangle, okay? Here's one way I can remember which way it is. Perpendicular bisector deals with sides, right? So the theorem deals with the angles of the triangle. So what I like to do is kind of draw like this clover, I suppose. That kind of helps me visualize it a little bit better. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, but that kind of helps me. Okay? All right. Angle bisector, again, by now, I should be able to show you this picture and be like, hey, what is that a picture of? And you'd say, oh, that looks like an angle bisector, right? Because it cuts the angle into two congruent pieces. So any line segment or ray that divides an angle into two congruent angles. Angle bisector, not new, okay? Angle bisector theorem, if a point is on the bisector of an angle, for example, this point, right? It's on the angle bisector then it's equidistant from the sides of the angle. It means this is the same as this, okay? The reason they have the right angles thrown in is because the distance from a point to a line is always perpendicular. So please don't think that's a perpendicular bisector. That's not what the picture shows. The only reason these are right angles is to show you that we found the distance from a point to a line and they're congruent. Is that okay? All right, and then we have backwards, converse of the angle bisector theorem. If a point in the interior of an angle is equidistant from the sides of the angle, so we would not have this given to us this time. 
we would have this and this. So point on the interior, equally spaced from the, um, from the rays of the angle. Then it's on the angle bisector. Then we would figure out, oh, that must have been an angle bisector. So these angles must be the same. It's forwards and backwards saying the same information. Okay? So in center is the point of concurrency of three angle bisectors of a triangle. So when you have the three angle bisectors meet, they meet at the end center. And then your end center theorem says, so angle bisectors, um, these black lines would be the angle bisectors. Do you guys see that? I think that's pretty easy to tell. So when you have angle bisectors, that deals with angles. So I'm going to be equally spaced to the sides. So it's going to be this one, this one, and this one, which is what this says, are all the same. So the way it helps me remember it, angle bisectors deals with angles, so these are all going to be equally spaced to the sides. Perpendicular bisectors deals with sides, so they're going to be equally spaced to the angles. Is there? Oh, thank you. Is this P? PD to PE to PF, thanks. PF, it's right on your notes though, right? Oh, you have different letters? Oh, okay, but it is right on your notes though. Okay. Is that okay? Okay. Thank you. Find each measure. We're going to find LP in this picture. So with the concept of today only, we're either talking perpendicular bisectors or angle bisectors, pretty much, right? So on this picture for number three, do I have a perpendicular bisector shown or do I have an angle bisector? Perpendicular, perpendicular bisector because I have perpendicular bisector. Is that okay? So go to the front of your notes. I think the concept of today can be intimidating, but if we use our notes, it's not that bad. So if you go to the front, which is all perpendicular bisector stuff, right? If you look at the second picture, your perpendicular bisector theorem, do you guys see that? That looks like this, okay? So we knew it was a perpendicular bisector. So back again on the second picture, if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, so L, for example, okay, then it's equidistant from the end points of the segment. So that means that this is the same as this. That's what that theorem says. Do you guys understand that? Okay. So again, if you use your notes and kind of just find an example that looks just like it, that's a little bit easier if you're confused. Okay. So I'm going to say 10x minus 5 is equal to 7x plus 1. Is anyone confused by that? All right, take your time and find X, please. It's right there. Thank you so much. <coughs> and what do we get? Two. Two. Is that what they wanted? No. no, not yet, right? They want LP. So for two seconds real quick, does anyone need help finding X is two? Everybody got that? Okay, good. So plug it back in. If LP is 10X minus 5, instead of an X, I'm going to put the two, right? So everybody, what is LP? 15. So I'm going to put it here and circle it, but you do whatever you want. Did I lose anybody? Okay. On 23, the concept of today is do we have an angle bisector or a segment bisector? Probably something about angles, right? I definitely don't have a perpendicular bisector, at least not that I can see right? So if you go, you're already on the back of your notes, right? Angle bisectors is on the back. If you look at your angle bisector theorem and the converse, okay, do you see that I have this? They're both 18, right? So I have a point on the interior of the angle that's equidistant to the, um, to the rays or to the sides of the angle. Therefore, it must be on the angle bisector. So this would be their converse of the angle bisector theorem. Okay? So this angle, MNQ, has to be the same as PNQ. Do you guys understand that? Yeah? Okay. So I actually wanted the measure of angle PNM, which is the big one. Okay? So I have to find what before I can even do that? You have to find X, right? So what are we going to do? Set them equal. 3X plus 5 is equal to 4X minus 8. You guys solve for X.
what did you get? Say it again. 13. You should get 13. If you didn't get it, try it again. Does anyone need help? Okay. Is that what they wanted? No. They want PNM, which is this one. The whole thing. What do you want to do? Yes, you can plug it into one of these angles and double it. You can plug it into the other one and double it. Or plug it into both and add, right? You do whatever you want to do. So everybody pick a method. Plug it into one and double. Plug it into the other one and double. Or plug it into both and add. Totally up to you. Anybody have it? Is it again? Should be 88. Let's try it again or ask a question. It's okay, just try again. If you're not getting it right, let me know. So while we're waiting, um, all three of those methods are great. All three of those are fine. But if you weren't doing it with me and you weren't sure that the 13 was right, I probably would have plugged it into both to make sure that they were the same. And that would have kind of been a hint that I got X right or not. Do you see what I'm saying? So um, plugging into one and doubling is totally fine if you got that right and you're pretty confident. You know what I mean? Did you get it right? Okay. Point P is the in center of triangle AEC. So in center is a pretty important letter word, excuse me, so I'm going to underline it and we'll come back. So AEC is my big triangle. In center, I'll come back and remember what that means in a moment. Find each measure, round to the nearest tenth. So we're going to go back and remember what in center is. In center is the point of concurrency of what? It's where what's meet. The angle bisectors meet. So I know that P is where the angle bisectors meet. So I know this is the same as this. This is the same as this, and this is the same as this. Do you guys see that that one word in center gave me all that information? Okay. And you can use three arcs if you want to. If that's not confusing to you, that's fine. It's the same as what I did. Okay. So I also know in center deals with angle bisector. Angle bisector deals with angles. So the theorem says that these are equally spaced to what? The angles or the sides? The sides. Very good. So I know these are all three the same. I don't know if I need that or not, but that word in center meant all that stuff. Is that okay? Okay. So now we're going to find a couple of things. We're going to find line PB and we're going to find measure of angle DAC. Let's go ahead and find DAC first because it's a little bit easier, right? So DAC is right here. So what is measure of angle DAC? 33. But if you didn't know that word in center or what it meant, you probably wouldn't have known that. Does that make sense? Bless you. So now we're looking for PB. If you look here, I have what? A right triangle, right? Where I'm missing one side. How do I find the third side of a right triangle? Pythagorean theorem. Yep. So I'm going to say x squared plus 10.9 squared is 13 squared. Is that okay? We're looking at this right triangle here. We're just missing this side. So this squared plus this squared equals that squared. Uh, the hypotenuse is across from the right angle, so the 13 has to be by itself. Okay? Solve for x, round to the nearest tenth. <coughs> Anybody think you got it? at me, what'd you get? 7.1. Good. 7.1. Yeah. 
7.08 something and it rounds to 7.1 nearest tenth. If you did not get that, tell me now so I can help you. Are you sure? Okay. 